Hi, everyone. My name is Leon Gordon, CEO and founder of Onyx Data and Forbes Technological Council contributor. I'm looking forward to being on the online prosperity show where we're going to talk everything data analytics and AI and what it means for you and your organization in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show, where we uncover the secrets of success in the digital age. I'm your host, Prosper Tarominga, and today we've got a guest who's about to kick our understanding of data analytics and artificial intelligence into high gear. Now, Leon, how are you doing today? Prosper, absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Pleasure to be with you today. And thank you very much for the warm introduction. Well, absolutely. The pleasure is all mine. I mean, it's only that the audience won't hear about all the false starts that we've had. I'm a little bit starstruck having you on the show, um, especially with your past being a football player. And now you're a big player in the data and AI realm. So I'm really excited to have you on the episode today. Excellent. Pleasure to be here with you and your audience as well. Really looking forward to, to digging into some of this in a bit more detail. Absolutely. So for those that are listening right now, you might be wondering, what are these guys uh, going on about? Yes, Leon Gordon is a former professional soccer player that has turned data analytics to be his home ground. And he's here to show us how to score big in the world of business with his insights. But instead of dribbling past defenders, is dribbling through data sets to help organizations unlock the power of artificial intelligence. Now, I know you're not the average data guy because I was expecting this big nerd person and um, you know somebody who was probably wearing a white dust coat who has just got data written all over him, but you're different. Tell us a little bit about your beginnings and how you got yourself into the world of data. Absolutely. And I think that that's the that's the key thing across the globe these days is that everybody is unique. And hopefully I can put my unique history and experience um, into play in terms of what we do and what we deliver for data analytics and, and AI. So let me see how we can how far we can take this back. So I know you mentioned Prosper. So, yes, I was previously a footballer. It feels like a long, long time ago now, nearly half a lifetime ago. But for me, it all started off, I had a deep interest in computers and computing from a young age, as I did with, with sports as well. Now, like many people similar to myself, when I first started playing football, I probably wasn't that good. <laughs> I started playing off about five years old, trying to follow in the footsteps of my big brother, trying to go and play with him and his friends and and rapidly being told, no, go away. You're, a, you're the annoying little brother. So anyway, that's where I got my humble beginnings. Um, I put it down to hard work. Um, I put everything down to hard work and dedication. I put a lot of time in across a lot of years. And I also was very fortunate um, to be to be able to be taken to a lot of games, training, et cetera, and have that support from, from family to really develop the, the football aspect. Now, from a football perspective, it meant that when I was around 12 years old, um, I went through a scouting process. I was scouted at what we would call um, a small tournament, a six-a-side tournament here in the UK. Um, and they asked me to take a friend with me. So I nominated one of my friends at the time. We went to what's called a, a trial, um, whereby lots of different um, young uh, individuals from, from across the UK go and, and play a lot of games, do a lot of training sessions to identify if you are if you fit the purpose to, to be onboarded as part of the process. Unfortunately, that didn't work out for me. Um, I wasn't selected. And so I went back to playing uh, local football and continuing the grind, so to speak, to get my next opportunity. Fortunately for me, the opportunity actually came playing in, in men's football. Now, what I mean by that is I was 13 years old playing with anything from 21 year olds to to 40 and 50 year olds um so really really up against it and I, I stood out and fortunately one of the the coaches um who saw one of the games was was a scout for for Wickham Wanderers and I went back through the process so Wickham actually turned me down the first time I went back through the process the second time and, and, and was successful a couple of a couple of years later um 
spent a few years uh, there in, in in the youth team, going through playing reserve team football, um, and then unfortunately, my contract came to an end and wasn't wasn't renewed. So at that point. I went and played some semi-professional football for a number of years and went into a couple of, of different careers. Now, the key to take away from this is that unlike a lot of my colleagues and peers in the industry, I didn't go down the university route. So um, from an education standpoint, I'm I'm very much a unique or a unicorn in the fact that um, I don't hold any any formal education in, 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 in this space. Now, as I mentioned, from a youngster, I've always really been interested in all things computers, computing, gaming, technology. Um, it's always been really, really big with me. And I started off building my own computers around the age of, of 12. And to be honest with you, it was generally because of the fact that we had a single parent household. Um, we weren't able to, 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 to get our hands on the latest technology. And so this meant I always needed to upgrade to be able to play the games like football manager that I wanted to play. And, and so had to go into the learning route of being able to understand what I needed to upgrade, how I needed to upgrade it, et cetera, et cetera. So what I gather from my own story is that there's, there's a few key attributes and qualities that have really led me to where I am today, which become dedication, a first for knowledge and a first to go and, and, and get the knowledge for whatever routes I, I feel are going to get me there in the, in the quickest route. And also, um, uh, the 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 ability to to not put any obstacles in front of me to go and feel that I can achieve whatever I put my mind to and so what this meant is that a few years after leaving football I actually started at the bottom of of, of what I would call the data career path so I started off as a temporary role uh, inputting data for an organisation um, based here in the in the UK it was only supposed to be um, maybe a one month or six week gig if I remember remember correctly. So really mind-numbing stuff, stuff that you would um you would give to 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 AI or or some other automated process to do in, in this day and age. And so what I probably showed was some attributes that were that were above uh, my station. So rather than just sitting there mind-numbingly inputting um the data and on my phone, I actually did a time and motion study against myself to to understand how long this process was going to take me and um, when the the key stakeholders could expect the process and to be delivered and and obviously get, gave them updates. So I think the the organization saw something inside me um, and they were happy to bring me into their IT team, starting off understanding SQL, going on training programs, etc. So to cut a long story short, outside of that I did a lot of of training in my own time, development, reading of books, personal projects, et cetera, to really ramp up my upskilling and then use this to navigate different jobs to get newer skills in, in, in the process. This probably culminated in around 2019, where I was able to start my own organization, Onyx Data, which is a data analytics and AI consultancy based out of the UK. Um, and we grew fairly sub significantly over the first three years, which actually led to, to me being what I call headhunted by a larger global uh, consultancy to become a part of their leadership team. Um, the, the leadership team was eight members, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I was one of those eight. And it was a very different way of working for me, um, having seven other people to to hold to account, to be accountable to, and to try to to implement imp implement change and unfortunately for me it's or, or fortunately depending on how you look at it i quickly realized it wasn't a scenario that i felt was going to be the, the, the right route for me to to grow my career in and so after one year i, I left there and came back and relaunched onyx data um about, about nine ten months ago now when we, we've been able to grow from strength to strength since then so hopefully that's a brief or, or maybe a bit lengthy overview of of, of, of the origin story Oh, absolutely. And I thank you so much for taking us through all of that, because now it really shines a light as to the kind of person that you are and the person, you know, that that you were before. And uh, just out of interest, where is your brother now? And is he still playing football? He is even even given the the aging years. So he was he was he was a great player. He he actually went on to we have a a cup in the UK called the FA Cup. So he only played semi professionally despite having many professional clubs um, after him. He suffered with injuries, and so but he did have quite a few FA Cup runs. So he's been on on TV, for example, on Sky Sports, etc. And he still has a kick about every every now and then. 
<laughs> Absolutely. I'd love to sit around dinner time, you know, at home and just hear the stories of you guys t talking about all the success that you have actually managed to gather. But talking about dinner time, you mentioned something that is formidable here that you had family support, um, especially in the days of football and also in the days of you trying to piece together, um, you know, computer parts as you were upgrading them. Now, how important is such a background, um, you know, for people in the future, especially in the position that you're in right now to have had such, a, you know, loving foundation? Absolutely. I mean, as I mentioned before, I grew up in a single parent um, um, household um, and my mother, God rest her soul, was was really the driving force uh, behind a lot of the key personality traits that, that, that I have and that, that, that have got me to where I am today. And as those who come from a single parent background know, it's very difficult, especially having two um young children that, that, that are in, involved in football. It's an onerous task to hold down a job, hold down a household and ensure that we can both go on to be successful um, in football, um, given all of the different training, the travel requirements, the weekends that are, that, that, that are needed. Uh, but we never wanted from anything from that perspective. We were always uh, pushed and nurtured to to do and venture into what we wanted to do. Um, and then obviously, like I say, given the support to then go and, and give that our all. Absolutely. And you did mention to that her, her soul rest in peace. Um, what would mom think about the man you've become today? Uh, great question. Obviously, unfortunately, we'll, we'll never know the answer to that. So it's always going to be something that that, that that we imagine. I think that the best way that I can answer that is that we strive every day. And you mentioned before the call, all of the accolades, etc. That's all that's all for mum. It's not for me. It's uh, it's to continue to, to go down the route of, of making her proud, even in her absence. So absolutely. And thank you so much for taking me there with you. Now, when you were around 13 years old, like you mentioned, you were put in a team where you had to play with men older than you were, and you were literally out of your depth. And that also happened when you were put in the leadership team of, um, you know, those eight people when you were, you know, also a little bit outside your depth. Did you see any similarities at that time, you know, considering you'd already been there before, um, you know, having to play with people bigger, bigger than you were. Absolutely. My, my key to life is you have to become comfortable being uncomfortable. OK, now we can all go through, we can all stay within our shells and never have any risk. And we'll probably just sail through life um, cruising through and nothing will ever happen to us. And you're going to have the ups, you're going to have the downs. Um, but it's all about pushing yourself to the to the next level um, and, and, and rising above that peak, so to speak. This is this is a good trait and it's a bad trait. It, it, it's it, it's a good trait because the ambition, the determination, the drive, and the will to succeed it, it's is strong. There's a passion um, that every day is a new opportunity to go and 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 really, as Les Brown would say, reach for the moon and and, and fall and fall amongst the stars. But it's also a bad thing because there's never a, there's never a win. Um, there's never a stop and look back and say, actually, this is what we did. It's always okay. Tick. Let's 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 go again. <laughs> Absolutely. And looking at the kind of stuff that you have to deal with and the kind of people that you are now involved with, I mean, for somebody who, like you said, you never received any formal education for what you now do, what sort of advice would you give to anyone who thinks I need to get my papers in order in order for me to uh, venture into, um, you know, whatever career that I want to do or whatever job I want to jump into? Absolutely. Don't get me wrong. It's not for everybody. Um, this this is the path that I've trodden and it's a difficult path to, to to tread. There's no there's no two ways around it. You have to work very hard to, especially in something that's highly technical, to 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 be able to stand amongst peers and 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 know your stuff as not something that that comes overnight. You have to put the time and the hours in and stay at the at the forefront of technology to be able to be able to do that. For me, it's it's a great thing because I don't have any student debt um, to worry about or or any of these other um, any of these other areas or or negatives that some of my my peers do have. But also, um, it also means that I have to 
uh, what's the the way I want to put this is probably is to is to fight harder or to or to display more to really show um the prowess that I have, the achievements that I can deliver without this type of background. We've spoken briefly around AI previous prior to joining this call. And what happens in this day and age is that there's a lot of algorithms over there that when you the, when you apply for a job, if you don't have certain criteria or certain qualifications, unfortunately, you won't pass the screening test. So it doesn't matter um, who you are as a person, potentially, um, and what you've gone to do outside of this without having some of those credentials, you won't actually um, even be in the on the on the field to play for that role. So there's a lot of biases that we need to overcome as we start to to move forward and navigate this new this new era. What I would say is that in this day and age, something that I'm probably going to show my age now, <laughs> we didn't have when I was younger is the access to a wealth of information that's available today for free. The key is for free. Okay, so we had encyclopedias that were in book form. We had, and I'm gonna, I'm going back a long time now. We had Encarta on CD for those of you that remember early Windows, um, and but and we had access to libraries, etc. That was it. Okay, in this day and age, you have the likes of YouTube. You have access via the likes of LinkedIn to mentors, to community groups, to um, to free online learning via places like Udemy, etc. This is one of the, this is one of my key faults or. or key advice to anybody coming up at the moment is put TikTok down for a moment, put down whatever else you're doing and go and spend an hour, even an hour a week um, studying in, 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 in the field that you want to become proficient in. And it's going to make such a change. Absolutely. And I quite like that. And yeah, you're right about, you know, the days when we grew up, um, all the information that you had was like from an encyclopedia or you'd have to have a library card. And if you didn't have any, one of those, uh, then that means you're going to be missing out on all that data. But then that puts you in a very unique position, um, you know, as compared to all the other maybe university uh educated people out there that would have had some sort of structure around what they've learned. You've had to piece together your experience and put it together from, like you say, learnings. I heard you talk about Les Brown and I heard you talk about, you know, different references that a lot of people in your field wouldn't have a clue what you're talking about. So what is it that you think sets your approach, um, you know, to leveraging data and AI, you know, sets it apart with the people that are in your field that might have taken the other route of, um, you know, going through a standardized sort of education and how does this benefit your clients? Oh, absolutely. So I, I, I guess the way that I'd look at it that is that they have strengths that I don't have and, and I have strengths that they don't have and they have weaknesses that I don't have and vice versa. I have weaknesses that they don't have. Now, what we tend to find and what I found across my career so far is that you t you turn those into superpowers. So the, the fact that I haven't been to university um, and I don't hold that that formalized education, it's not it's not a weakness for me. Um, abs absolutely not. Um, it may be other people may find, may try to identify in, in a weakness for me. But no, I have many other experiences, like you mentioned, the working in a team as, as part of the, the football aspect, the, the, the dedication to, to, to winning a goal, the values that we bring to ensuring that we deliver for the client. And potentially we can do this in ways that other people don't think of because it's very rigid. We've been able to go out and have real world experience of these scenarios where things potentially do go wrong. There are potential obstacles that we've navigated successfully previously that other um, other peers potentially haven't have never even seen before um, as well. So in my mindset, this is absolutely a strength. And like you mentioned, I do tap in. So one of the key underlying um, aspects of this is I do tap into very much positive motivational messaging um, on a daily basis have done for, for a large amount of years it's not just Les Brown we have the likes of Eric Thomas Zig Ziglar Jim Ron the, the, this, the list goes on and on um, in terms of it's for me it's not just about developing educationally it's about developing strength mindset um, uh, aspects as well so Oh, absolutely. See, in the world that we live in right now, your health, your wealth, your relationships all have to be operating at, um, you know, all cylinders because so many people will focus on maybe their career and neglect their mental health or their actual physical health. And it's all just going to be like a wonky 
table out there and you know it's it's good that you've actually come to realize that maybe it's because you had to you know learn your way through and obviously like les brown says you got to be hungry you know exactly <laughs> <laughs> so you never know what you are um you know consuming but you're also not working behind the computer right you're also doing keynote speeches um out there and some of them have been renowned to be inspiring and you know with you know new innovation and things like that how do you keep on top of things do you keep learning or you know you've 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 arrived as some people would say this is it for me oh absolutely not so that every day every day is a learning in 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 one way shape or form now it's very difficult to navigate that there's new technology to new technological releases on a daily basis uh, at the moment prosper it's it, it's insane and you can quite easily um get lost in the hype that what i have is dedicated processes automation and ai that works for me to deliver what i believe are going to be the key areas that i need to um the content that i need to review research and, and then and then go through like that so we use it to really filter through the noise from a, from a personal perspective so i have structures in place that enable me to do that and it's all for me it's all about routine um like you've mentioned, being the CEO of an organization, having all of these different, these other areas and aspects that I have to play into on a daily basis, we have to have a fairly, uh, lots of systems, lots of frameworks and, and, and lots of routine around, around making, making this work. Absolutely. Now, who are the kind of people that you end up working with, um, you know, just so that we are aware of that? Oh, absolutely. So I, I believe I can go on record with, with some of them. So we're currently working on a project at, out in the Middle East, which features um, Starlink. And so they're a SpaceX subsidiary, uh, an organization called Elcom. And we work very closely with Microsoft as well, especially in the region. So generally, we tend to partner with organizations that, that are firstly to, um, to grow, to scale, have that startup mentality, and want to move forward in, in a fast pace. So we're not one of the big for consultancies that's hammered home with uh, with with paperwork and um, and potentially never actually reaches the the, the tangible result that, that you like we really offer that boutique service where you have dedicated experts that partner with your organization to drive business value but to do so using um the technology that's that's right for you as well absolutely my understanding of data and you know obviously the use of ai is sort of like all the ingredients to bake a cake. And when the cake is there, people will now be able to enjoy it. But if it's just sugar, flour, and maybe salt, people wouldn't know whether you want to make a cake or maybe you want to make some muffins, right? So there's been a lot of talk about, um, you know, data and breaches and privacy and all the ethical stuff that happens with data. Is it the type of stuff that you deal with or are you the good guy when it comes to this? I'd like to think I'm a good guy across across all everything that encompasses data analytics and AI. But I think that where we see a lot of organizations fail is um, jumping from pillar to post. You mentioned the analogy of being able to use a recipe to bake a cake. Well, if you if you if you if you change your sugar to be salt, the taste at the at the end of it's going to be absolutely atrocious rather than the sweet taste that, that you want. And what we do when we partner with organizations is really drill down into each of these ingredients. So this could be data quality, data accuracy, data governance, security, um, machine learning. And we ensure that we have we build a concrete foundation so that you're you're not you're not building all this technology on sand. You're actually building, for example, the Great Wall of China or or the Burj Khalifa in Dubai on a, on a very strong foundation that enables you to scale and become become very modular. So I'll, I'll, I can let you into a into a secret as well, Prosper. I can give you a um, what's we're looking for an exclusive. So I've recently just recorded a LinkedIn learning course on um, data strategy, how to build and execute a successful data strategy. And this goes through exactly what I'm discussing at the moment. It should be available um, between mid and, and early Jul uh, June, sorry, I believe. But this really helps organizations understand at, at the leadership level why you need a data strategy, how you can utilize it to drive um, business value, 
value, whether this is revenue, if more efficient processes, and potentially, as we've done before, how you can even utilize um, data that you that you create and collate to then sell it as a new revenue stream as well. Mm, okay, so just looking at data strategy, um, humor me a little bit here. Is this the kind of thing that you work with? So me and a friend have a business and, you know, it's puppy breeding. And we want to predict which dog breeds will be the next big trend, um, you know, in the future. And we come to somebody like you. Is this something that you can um, help us correlate and put together and, um, you know, create a strategy around? Absolutely. Absolutely. So anything, so the, the the world that we live in now is more abundant with data than ever before. We're transmitting data as we speak. We're obviously doing this, this virtually via our laptops or computers and also our mobile phone devices, smart wearables. Nowadays we have smart toasters, smart washing machines, et cetera. All of these um, transmit, transmit data and all of this data can be correlated depending on the use case uh, that you're looking for to then um, potentially predict, predict, like you said, the outcome. Um, but it's all based on historical information. So the way that we would look at that is, okay, which dog breed are you looking at to go and to go and sell? But how can we then fold in potentially more data to make you aware of dog breeds that actually don't exist today that potentially would come to fruition in 10 years time, 15 years time that you should be aware of. And some people that, that well, one organization, one organization I think is absolutely amazing at using this technology to drive the future is Netflix. So Netflix will actually create TV shows, series, and films based on what their audience loves. This puts them so far ahead of the curve that they're, um, the Umbrella Academy is a really great, great example of this. It's a show that I like. It's a super, superhero show with, with some comedy involved in it as well. And Netflix actually built this this whole series based on the data it was able to to access from its user base and really tailored this whole show towards what would work with their audience. Wow. So next time when Netflix asks me, are you still watching? Should I say yes or no? Because they're gathering data on me whether I'm going to be watching that next show. It's all in T's and C's, right? Um, so, so, so yes, a lot of the, the, basically, I can't think of an organization at the forefront of of of, of business that is not um, data driven in in the day, in this day and age. Right. I mean, obviously, I know you deal with big numbers and a lot of things, but um, I mean, when we finish recording this, I would like for you to help me. I've got a situation with my daughters. I try very hard to get them to eat breakfast in the morning. And I, when, every time I go to the supermarket, we, there's a big selection of cereal in the supermarket aisle. And I don't know which one to pick, which my daughters were going to eat because half of the time they just eat one scoop of it. And we now have 15 unopened box. I mean, opened up boxes that haven't been finished. So is there a way that you can help dads figure out, you know, um, you know, analyze all these breakfast preferences resulting in um, you recommending the perfect cereal based on flavor, crunchiness and milk absorption rate and everything else that comes along with it. Because I'm literally up to here with all that information now. Absolutely. So we, there's there's many data points there that you've mentioned. And from those data points, we can then build out the attributes and then hone in on, on what we believe and predict would be the the, the accurate cereal. Definitely. Okay, fantastic. I think you've been hired. So don't worry about <laughs> those eight people that, you know, you couldn't sit in the same boardroom as. I think you've got work with my daughters here. But on a serious note, how do you navigate the ethical considerations that come with uh, leveraging AI and big data? Being aware of them, right? So I, I think for for me, I get a unique perspective because I'm I'm probably part of of, of some of those ethical um, groups that 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 that, that are, they're highly at risk from these type of technologies. So if you put me in in front of a certain kind of model, I may be labelled as a criminal. Um, and like we say, for all intents and purposes, don't worry, I'm not a criminal. Um, but this is a lot of the biases um, and ethical considerations that we need to be more aware of. And this this happens 
And um, it's not just the final model itself. It's actually down to the information being used to train the models, the developers that are being used to train to train the models. Is there enough diversity in in that team? Um, and th- there's there's many different steps that we that we have to overcome here. And unfortunately for me, I think that we're behind the curve on this. So we are seeing new new laws, especially from from an artificial intelligence and AI perspective coming into fruition it's just not enough for me at the moment we're, we're very much in the ai era whether people want to believe it or not we have been for some time and this it's only ever going to go in one direction which is which is forward and so we need to really ramp up our efforts um our observations and be be asking more than asking more people than just the the the, the largest um organizations globally uh, and also governments to to have input on this um, my suggestion is that we need to have a worldwide framework to ensure that um that we that everybody's governed the same with the use of of this technology and we're seeing lots of different um security risks uh, coming coming to fruition the likes of deep fakes which has been around for some time now um also we were having deep fake from an audio perspective not just a video perspective now um the amount of ai generated content and and replies to comments etc is is absolutely insane and we don't really have any governance structure in terms of how this should be used how it should be utilized should we watermark images for example we had the big news story in the uk with um with princess kate i believe it was in terms of were these um were her images ai generated or or ai altered and and so how how do we navigate this we're in a world now where yes um the likes of open ai microsoft google uh, etc have these proprietary models but we also have open source models now what i mean by open source is that it's freely available um to to everybody out there so pandora's box is already open everything that we can do today um generating video etc is out there to be used for malicious purposes and also for 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 beneficial purposes to 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 humanity so it's it's really time that we don't um what's the word don't throw the brakes on the technology is probably the best way to look at it but also start to put in place um laws and governance that allow us to be able to grow with this in a humane way absolutely so should businesses be afraid then of you know how they are represented out there because like you said everything can be duplicated or deep faked um you know as, as as soon as it as it leaves you no longer have control of what happens to a piece of content out there what what sort of advice would you give to organizations that are looking to excel in this sort of data driven era leverage it so the way that we approach this is we we look at an organization's key goals is it that you want to increase net profit by five percent boost efficiency across the department by 20 percent key organizational goals that you're looking to deliver this year potentially next year etc then we look at how we can use data advanced analytics or, or ai projects to then support that program and we also put a weighting in in regards to the risk like we say, this technology is ever evolving, legislation and laws are ever evolving. So something that's fit for purpose today as a solution may actually incur some some fines or, or some legal issues in a couple of years time. So it's about um, making organizations aware of, 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 of the project in terms of its deliverables, the value it can bring to the organization, but also the potential risks that, that, that are associated with that project. Then we have a final weighting and a final score that's applied to that project. And if the organization wants to move forward with it based on that data-driven um, uh, advice and evidence, then we, then we do so. Absolutely. And for those that would like to maybe dive deep in with you and get an understanding of how you can possibly help them make sense of their data, um, especially I've already told you my issue, what would be the best way that people can get a hold of you? Absolutely. So I'm I'm very available on, on LinkedIn. I'm a member of their Top Voice program, and you can find me, uh, Leon Gordon, on on LinkedIn. Outside of that, my organization Onyx Data. So it's O N Y X onyxdata.co.uk. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Absolutely. Now you've just mentioned being Top Voice for 2024. Congratulations on that. You know, it, it shows that you're clearly on the f- forefront of your field, what sort of emerging trends in technology and maybe analytics do you believe will actually shape the future 
of um, you know data driven decision making that we can be on the lookout for? Absolutely. So I think we're going to see the space race continue um, uh, and continue to gain to gain speed as well. There, it's going to be fueled and driven by artificial intelligence and, and robotics. I, I I presume, and the, my my thought process at the moment is that we're going to continue to see a combination of AI and robotics over time, which will also need to see an increase in 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 how we power these type of systems um, as well. So there should be quite a large. Um, ramp up in terms of, of, of fueling so whether this becomes hydrogen cells or, or whichever technologies we, we look at from that forefront with it's quite clear that the the, the, the fueling and the, and the power systems that we have in place at the moment aren't fit for purpose so this will see an evolution of the potential battery technology as well or another another fuel source as well so i, I see those as being the three key areas. Now, every single one of those technologies is driven fundamentally uh, by data. So we, we should continue to see the, the explosion of data in that space as well. And it's also worth noting that not every organization is bleeding edge technology. Uh, in fact, the, the high percentage aren't. They're either mid-scale or, or still um, operating on technologies from uh, legacy technologies is what we would call them. So there's also going to be that ramp up period of where nobody would be out of a job overnight, um, especially for a lot of these um established established skill sets there's going to become more saturation in the market yes but we're actually at least in the uk facing uh, an economic downturn in terms of the amount of people coming into uh, the workforce as, as as the older generations start to leave the workforce as well so what we're looking at is, is artificial intelligence being utilized to bridge this gap of not having enough workers as opposed to coming in to replace everybody's jobs so to speak Absolutely. See, that was the one thing that I was afraid that by the end of this interview, I might not have a job left. But it looks like, you, as you mentioned, there's still legacy technology that we can still tinker in with and not all is lost. OK, speaking of legacy technology, you used to change computers, right? And, you know, yes. update them and, um, you know, uh, the hard drives so that they match you know, the current use use case that you would have wanted. Now, if we could maybe take that literally and go back in time a little bit and um, picture little Leon whose contract hasn't been renewed by um, Wickham, what was what, what was the team again? Wickham, Wickham, Wickham Wanderers. Wanderers. Yeah, by Wickham yes. Wanderers. And yes. you're sitting there, you're devastated. You don't know what you're going to be doing. And, you know, we go back into the into the past from the future and we go and, um, you know, upgrade that little boy. What sort of advice would you give, um, you know, to your younger self, knowing what you know now about how your life turned out? Oh, don't worry. Um, so probably if the question is, would I have done anything different at that time? Um uh, more than likely, yes. So there were other cl clubs interested in me at the time. I decided to go my own route as opposed to... Um, to going down that route and potentially it would have worked out differently um but like i say we make these decisions and you have to have faith in the decisions you make i would say that the key advice that i would give to myself is this is just the start the skills and and the attributes that you've put and you've you've you spent the, the years honing are only going to go on to to suit you um across uh, across the rest of your life so don't take it to heart take time to digest to learn the lessons and then and then re regroup and and plan the way forward and and as i mentioned before aim for the moon Oh, fantastic. And talking about aiming for the moon, before we wrap up, can you maybe give us a bit of a teaser of what to expect next for Leon or for Onyx Data as a whole? Absolutely. So more more of the same, really. We're, we're very much looking um, to support organizations moving forward on the journey, like you mentioned, into, into AI and data. There are so many organizations that see this uh, from the from the aspect of fear, um, not not fully understanding it. And where we fit in is it's really, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it a hand holding through that journey, but supporting organizations to understand 
uh, and these technologies, how they can leverage it and, it and if they should or not. And so that's what I see our future continuing to be. Now, we have um, some key business goals. One of them is, is opening a new office in, in the next couple of years in a different region. And we're going to continue to strive towards those. Uh, and I'm going to continue hopefully doing a lot more of the same and, and fingers crossed having some more time off in, 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 in the future as well. So something that we don't do at the moment is, is, is take many breaks. So hopefully that's on the, in the goals for the future as well. Absolutely love this. Now, Leon, you see, I virtually believe in life. We're here to live, to learn and to contribute. And I see you have done all of these things. You have lived, you know, your life up to where you really want it to be. And you keep learning and you have learned to become the person that you have become. And now you're contributing to humanity as a whole because all this data and all this information that you are making sense of is making somebody else's life better. So you, my friend, are definitely changing the world in your own little um, you know, way. And um, I, I can't wait to see what's in store. Thank you, Prosper. Very, very, very kind words of you. <laughs> really appreciate it. Fantastic. And there you have it, folks. A deep dive into the world of data, analytics, and artificial intelligence with the incredible Leon Gordon. But this is just the beginning, like what Leon says. Um, be sure to re-watch this episode so you can be able to catch every insightful moment. I know it went really, really fast. Even I didn't notice how fast um, it went. So uh, be sure to re-watch this episode again or if you know somebody who would benefit from the information that we have just um, you know, spoken about, share this with a friend or two that are in the space and you might just help them be, do and have a happier existence. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe for more enriching content like this. Until next time, stay curious and keep prospering. Bye for now. <music>